Following our theme, DB and DC schemes, risk solutions and opportunities. So it's a pleasure to hand over to Martin Thiessen, CEO of Metzler Pension Management GmbH. So thanks, Liam, for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be in Berlin. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Um, I think we are now in the heart of the political decisions, uh, at least in Germany, and one of the, from my point of view, from a occupational pension perspective, most important decision of the last five years, I think, was the introduction of the new uh, social partnership model uh, in Germany. And I will give, will give you a little bit insight of the first uh, established uh, social partner model, as we call it in Germany. Um, and give you not only an overview of what we did in the past five years, but also a little bit in the techniques. Um, I'm an actuary, so I cannot uh, stick without uh, showing the techniques and, and see whether this would work out in the future. That's one. Just a wrap up. Uh, I think we heard it uh, sometime in the morning as well. Um, the the pension landscape in Germany is quite um, diverse. Um, Metzler itself is positioned actively in the left, in the direct promise area with the CTA and uh, most important in the right side in the German pension fund area with a buyout pension fund as well as the uh, social partnership uh, model within a pension fund to a separate one. But we have the three in between, the support fund, the Pensionskasse and the direct insurance business as well. When it comes to de-risking and handle the turmoil, I guess uh, it's most important who bears the risk in the schemes. Um, starting from the left again, um, the risk is carried by the employer in the direct promise area, um, and it decreases or shifts towards the employee when it comes then in the end uh, to the social partnership model, which was recently introduced. Um, from a capital market perspective, on the left-hand side, it's, we call it here no link to the asset performance. I think no direct link is a, is a better uh, expression here. Uh, up to a full capital market participation when it comes to the social partner model. I think if you keep that in mind, I think regarding from a, a de-risking, it's quite important that in the social partner uh, model here in Germany, the total capital market risk is bared by the employees or by the beneficiaries. I think this is a quite important uh, yeah, topic or feature of the new model. Um, I think as Dr. Schmachtenberg told us in the morning uh, and then someone, the, the law was enforced in, in January 2018. And as we said, the first um, social partnership model um, was established beginning of this year. So, it might be seen as if Germany fell into a, let me call it, a sleeping beauty slumber uh, in 2018 and woke up five years after the, the, the law was enforced and then established um, the model. I think I can promise it was not a sleeping beauty slumber, um, but we had to overcome, and it was mentioned in the morning as well, uh, the, the lack of guarantee, which is a, a quite important feature of the new model. This is the, in, in the second column. I think it's a new pension plan type. That's a given from the law. But the most important thing is that, that there is no guarantee. And I want to combine it with, um, let me say the phrases, it's a pay and forget for the employer. So they just pay the contributions and there are no guarantee N neither in the accumulation phase nor in the decumulation phase. I think this is important as well. For the employee, it's um, pay, and, uh, pay as you go from the accumulation phase, but in the decumulation phase, as I said, there's no guarantee. There's no stable pensions from a guarantee perspective. And therefore, the agreement or the, the law says, okay, there has to be a collective agreement between employers and employees, and they cannot do it on their own, or the, the law said, okay, it's, it's not possible that they do it on their own. So 
the employer association as well as the trade unions are the social partners in this respect and they have to negotiate um, a collective agreement in order to establish a social partnership model. Um, but with establishing the social partnership model, they are not out of the equation. Um, another rule in the law says they have, they have to be, so the social partner, the employers and the employees, have not only to establish the model, but also steer and manage the model there. So they have to give a parameterization of the model, which encouraged then um, the pension fund, so in this uh, example, the Metzer pension fund, to set up a smart technique behind that uh, to come up with the, with the parameters, and they have to steer it in the lifetime of the, of the running model. And I think this is a challenge, or this was a challenge, uh, setting up the first one, because they have to discuss the responsibilities of each side and they have to come up with a solution like we call it a social partner beirat which is a committee alongside the uh, social partnership uh, model which steers over the lifetime the, evol the evaluation and the involvement of, of the model. The framework um, is the financing vehicle, is the German pension fund. I think there are two, others, um, two other uh, options, the, di uh, the direct insurance as well as the Pensionskasse. But my impression is that the Pensionsfonds, so um, the German pension fund, is the remaining vehicle um, for any new model as well. I have to mention one aspect is missing on this slide, and this, these are the additional contributions. I think some part of the negotiation uh, was also the additional contribution, Sicherungsbeitrag in Germany, um, which has to be made from the employer side to compensate a little bit the lack of guarantee. This is around 5 to 10 percent of the initial contribution, but it's a quite important element of the social partnership model uh, and we will see that especially when I comment a little bit on the decumulation phase. As I said, um, full participation in capital markets, so a full participation in the asset management returns and therefore the strategic asset allocation in the asset management itself from a cost but also performance uh, perspective is quite important. Um, in, let me call it our um, so, uh, social partner model or the social partnership model, uh, there was a range, range defined from um, the neg negotiation partners, from the social partners, between 3.5 and 7.5 percent. It was quite challenging, this range, when we started the negotiations, I think, in 2019-20. Um, but one idea was full capital market pa uh, participation should lead to significant higher returns in the asset management um, because especially the insurance uh, industry always said we have those guarantees, high interest rate guarantees, and therefore we need to invest quite carefully. We cannot come up with higher um, expected returns out of the strategic asset allocation. And therefore we said, okay, we have to show up a model which brings expected returns, so no guarantees, but expected returns between 3.5 and 7.5%. And fortunately, our model could be, could be set up in the past on a already existing strategic asset allocation and fund, and therefore we have a life history of this fund, and we could show that even after the COVID crisis, we had PA returns of above 6% in the fund, but um, to be honest, um, we are now in a phase where we come from below 3% and, and speeding up a little bit towards the, the lower end of the spectrum, the 3.5, um, which shows that there is a huge volatility over the lifetime, especially in the decumulation, uh, in the accumulation phase, sorry. Um, but we need to have this volatility and we have to report on this volatility towards the beneficiaries 
in order to show up such returns 3.5 to 7.5. Um, just to give you a little bit uh, insight how the strategic asset allocation is set up, you, you see it's a portion of 30% equities. Uh, we, the social partners gave us a range from zero to 70, so a wide range of equities in order to um, cope with different investment environments with different capital market environments, um, but there is still a huge um, portion of fixed income, uh, nearly 50%, but as well um, gold and, and real estate in order to be a little bit a, a solid fundament uh, of the strategic asset allocation. So we showed in the past as well, we hope for the future, that this strategic asset allocation with the flexibility we have meets the expectations of 3.5 to 7.5 percent. So now a more schematic yeah, illustration of the lifetime of the contributions and the pension payments. And I think these um, are quite important in the individual, as we set it up, individual active or accumulation phase, we have the contributions we have the particip participation in capital markets um, up to the retirement age. Throughout this period, um, we show the beneficiaries in the model a so-called expected pension payments at retirement age. We call it technically a Sollrente in Germany, um, which we defined as this pension payment which consumes not only 100% of the final capital at retirement age, but um, the amount of, um, of capital which is needed to set up a pension payment which consumes, uh, or which, which ended up in a, in a capital market range, which is um, capital versus the liability versus the PV of the pension payments at 112.5. The law allows the range between 100 and 125. Below 100, we have to reduce the pensions. Above 125, we need to increase the pensions. Between 100 and 125, uh, the pension can, could be stable, and therefore we said, okay, in the transition phase from the accumulation to the decumulation phase, we need a certain buffer because in the accumulation phase, there is no buffer used, uh, and all the buffer is kept for the decumulation phase in order to stabilize the pension payments there. So e each and every beneficiary which has a transition from the accumulation into the decumulation phase brings, with, brings a buffer of 12.5% uh, into the pension year environment. And then the pension payment starts, um, and it's, it's a quite small diagram on the right below side. Um, therefore, um, we did a little bit a zoom out of this phase because there it's, it's quite important um, that we have, and we start with a more benign environment, a benign capital market environment, and we have the opportunity if, funny, if the capital a ratio is above 125 to increase the pensions, which is then starting at age 68, 69, 70. Uh, but then maybe capital market shrink again, we have another crisis, and um, we have to reduce the pensions, maybe down to the initial pension payment, but even further, as we show it here in, uh, at age 75, 76, and uh, so on. And for this reduction, which we have to do, within the pension fund and which we have to communicate to the beneficiaries. So they definitely have to know that now the capital market is, or the, the capital available is that much shrinking that we cannot pay their initial pension payments anymore. But we have this additional contribution from the beginning, the five to 10% uh, of, the, of the employer contributions in order to top up the reduced pension payments up to the, for example, initial expense, um, uh, pension payments. And this can be done 
from a level perspective, so this is decided by the social partners, from a level perspective, it can be fully topped up, it can be partially topped up, and it can be done temporarily. I think this is quite new uh, to the industry because normally if you top up with any buffers or reserves, a pension payment or a, pay a payment in insurance companies, you have to then do it for the whole lifetime of the pensions. And here it's just a temporary top up, which is, a, from my perspective, a quite efficient use um, of, the, of the extra buffer uh, we have. And here we also rely on capital markets. So the idea is basically that uh, capital markets will get into a more benign environment again. And then we can, due to the, um, to the rise in the capital uh, ratio, increase pension payments again, again and don't use uh, this additional buffer uh, anymore up to a more benign environment and even increase uh, pension payments again. Showing here, for me it's quite important and towards the beneficiaries as well that we, that we have a volatile pension payment over time. This is the heart of the system, so to say. Um, but we use all the techniques, we use capital markets, we use the contributions which we have um, or which we get from the employer as well as techniques in the decumulation phase to stabilize the pension payments. I think this is um, a quite important topic for the social partners as well because in the end they have to communicate uh, the reduction in, in pension payments. So it's a combination of social partners and us as a pension fund which tries to, in quotation marks, ensure, guarantee that we have a stable pension payments over time. But in the end, it's, there, is, there is no guarantee. Um, and maybe as a, la as a last conclusion, for me, it was quite important that the, that the model starts uh, or started uh, in the beginning of this year. We have the first contributions in the systems and then uh, we should give capital market and time a little bit um, the opportunity to show that such a model um, works. Um, I think it's, it's relying on capital markets, but capital markets in the last years showed um, that they can stabilize such returns. But there will be definitely such environments where we have to reduce the pension payments. Um, so future will show whether this would be the new occupational pension system my personal view is um, that definitely a bigger part of the occupational pension can be substituted by this because the employer with no risk, pay and forget, just uh, promise the contribution and um, the system, the buffers and the techniques behind it try to ensure a little bit of stability uh, of the pension payments, but future will show. That's Thank you very much. Okay, yes, yeah, so next speaker is uh, Harman van Weinen from, from ABP. How did we want to do it? Did you want to take um, que can, perhaps questions? I can take questions immediately because I'm, I'm not part of the panel discussion afterwards, therefore Harman will be, but we, we can do it in the coffee break. So question well, on discount rates. Yes. Yeah, the, the, maybe the first question first. Uh, so the discount rate is the expected return of the strategic asset allocation. Yeah, which is, uh, let me say, beneficiary for, from my perspective as an actuary, as a capital market expert, because uh, we, the system relies on the capital market. And therefore, I think um, having the, expect, the long term expected return of the strategic asset allocation as a discount rate in place. Uh, is better than have a, let me call it in quotation mark, artificial uh, discount rate. But again, it's a full reliance on capital market in this respect. Um, and the second one was uh, the... Investment 
the, end, the, end, the investment composition. Yeah, we discussed a lot about accumulation, decumulation phase. Should the buffer reserve be separately invested? The social partners together with us decided to have a one fund for everything, the accumulation, the decumulation phase and the buffer. Uh, in order not to distinguish there to be more conservative for the pension payments or for the decumulation phase than for the accumulation phase. Um, we discussed LDI strategies, for example, for the decumulation phase as well. And in the end, we decided full reliance on capital market. And the steering here is the strategic asset allocation, which can be, as I said, from the equity perspective, zero to 70, be quite flexible, adjusted. And then the gentleman in the fourth row. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm a bit surprised about the fixed uh, buffer that you take uh, when people retire. Uh, yeah, could just repeat the question. Uh, yeah, the so the question was about the the perceived stable buffer of 12.5% uh, in the retirement age. So when there is the transition between accumulation and decumulation phase, it, it's it's a relative buffer. So um, we just bring uh, or in in front of the beneficiaries, we have this so-called sol rente, so these expected ben pension payments at retirement age, and this is our ambition and um, we count the liability of this ambition and if a, in, a, in a benign environment um, a pensioner come with a capital ratio of 120 or 122, he gets the Solrente, so this uh, expected pension payment and brings in an additional buffer. And then the other one, which is below 12.5%, brings in less I have to admit, if it is at the retirement age below 100, there is no buffer anymore. And then we cannot bring the Solrente or these expected pension payments into place. We have to bring a lower pension there. And for above 125, we scale it down to 125 and, and just commit the, the 125. Perhaps another, do we have one, uh, one final yeah. question? Maybe? Yes. Uh, how do you define this buffer? I mean. I guess this is a surplus uh, year by year from the investment, but uh, if, let's say, we have a lot of uh, profit from investments, how do you uh, separate this from buffer for this 25% or for a future buffer in case of deficit, etc.? Thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not depending directly on the asset performance. It's just that we calculate an expected pension payment and this expected pension payment already uh, accounts for a buffer of 12.5%. So we don't use the full capital um, accumulated over the phase. So only this one, which leads to a funding ratio of or capital ratio of 112.5. Uh, so there is already a buffer depending on the movement of capital markets in the accumulation phase. So it's not a, a direct, or let me say, a constant buffer. It's, it's, it depends on the path of the capital markets over, over the accumulation phase. Therefore, it's rel relative, as, as you already asked for. OK. Some good questions there. I think we better move on. Um, sorry yeah. for jumping the gun a little bit there, because uh, it's great to have some questions. So now. Uh, it's time to hand over to uh, Harman van Weinen of a ABP. Thanks, Liam, for your introduction. Good afternoon. Pensions, to protect pension in a time of turmoil. Very interesting perspective, because we have to protect... There are no timers ingesteld. Was my ghost speaker? Because of the, the characteristics of the pensions, we have to protect them. It was already the years before us. It was a very important task of pension boards, pension funds, uh, social partners, 
and especially the the last year, the last years, we have to protect them in times of turmoil. Uh, not only because of the, the pension as such, the nature of pension we have to protect because of the risk there are, demographic risk, also the risk of the interest rate curves, the risk of the capital markets, but also, and we have to take a look to it also, we have to protect uh, the participants because a lot of the participants are not working anymore, are in a post-active state of being. So it's not only the product that is vulnerable, also the people that are receiving the pensions are in a vulnerable stage of life. And I think it's very important to take a look to that also. As Martin told, there's a change now from risk from uh, employers to employees, but not only to employees, also to retired people. So they are extra vulnerable. So that's an extra perspective when we talk about how to protect pensions in time of turmoil. These questions are already a long time on the agenda in the Netherlands, not only within social partners, also in the politics, and also in the last years within ABP. ABP is the pension fund of the civil servants. We have three million uh, participants in the Netherlands. We have almost 500 billion on ass and, and assets, so we have a big responsibility and last year, it was 100 years ago that ABP was established. So we celebrated our 100th year. So we have a, a long history. And also in that long history, we had a lot of different times of turmoil. Uh, after establishing in the early 20s last, uh, last century, we had the crisis of the 30s with the Second World War. We had the 70s, the crisis. We had the oil, the oil crisis. We had the labor market crisis in the 80s. We had the internet bubble in the zeros of this century. We had the financial crisis, and still we are uh, living as a pension fund. So I think we have a, a long history of uh, protect pension in time of turmoils, a lot of turmoils. And I think it's very important to see that what are the characteristics of, of that, stable, uh, that stable situation we have in the Netherlands. I think part of the, the culture of the Netherlands that we see pension in the second pillar as a labor agreement, uh, rooted in our uh, negotiations, uh, rooted within the trade unions and the employer associations. We have a, a big responsibility for uh, the retirement of, uh, of, of, of people that are working now. So there's an extra responsibility to protect them when they're in a vulnerable stage, as said earlier. And then, Still, there is a big transformation going on in the Netherlands the last years. We started, I think, 15 years ago with the negotiation. We do it on a very good way in the Netherlands always. Uh, that's the difference also with Germany. Uh, you said uh, two years ago we have to change, and you started already this, uh, this year. Uh, we are still in the process of uh, the legislation. Uh, in 2019, so almost four years ago, there was a collective agreement, a pension agreement, a national agreement between social partners and the, and the government. And after 2019, we were in the process of the legislation, uh, and still it is not at the end. We hope in the, next of, of the end of next month, the end of May, that the Senate will, uh, will pass it through. So it took a long process, and what was happening, one of the reasons to have the big uh, transformation was... Uh, that the capital markets last year, the economic environment was changing. But what was also was happening last year, that there was another change. Uh, it was a completely other uh, uh, economic environment. So a lot of people who were against this new system uh, raised the debate again from, of, of is, it, is, is this the moment now to, to do such a transformation? Because when we have the big question how to protect pensions in times of turmoil, do you have to do a big transition on that moment. Isn't it, is it, isn't it better to, to leave it at the old system? So in my presentation, I will uh, say some, some of the characteristics. I will not go so deep in details, in techniques. I'm also an actuary, Martin, but I have learned to live with it, and I can, I can cope with it. And I'm also a theologian, so I have to preach the gospel of the new, uh, the new system uh, also. So I will first mention some of the typical uh, characteristics of the new pension fund. And I said earlier, we had a very strong uh, and stable pension system 
uh, with elements of uh, collective pensions, solidarity, and compulsory participation. I think the last one is a very uh, important characteristic of the Netherlands, that uh, all the people working in the big sectors uh, are compulsory to a pension plan. Uh, so I think that's one of the, uh, the, uh, the biggest characteristics, that we have a very good level of pensions in the Netherlands for, uh, for more than 100 years in the situation of ABP. So those kind of good things we want to, to, to remain in the new system. And the whole system is about from DB to DC, but the, the old system was not a strict DB system and the new system is not a strict DC system. So uh, the, indeed there is a change of system, but in the new system we want to keep the good elements, the strong elements of the, the, the current system. One of the characteristics is also that uh, that we have a more uh, a dependence of the economic environment. In the old system, it was a kind of, of DB with a pension right, a promise. And uh, in the new system, we have a capital, a personal capital, that also will, we will uh, communicate about it in, also in not rights, but also the amount of pension they will, they will get. But it is, a, it is a pension capital that fluctuates also with the economic environment. So the accrued pensions uh, have also a, a downside. It can be lowered, but we still have a lot of buffers in it. I will show you within a couple of minutes uh, an overview, a figure of how it works. Uh, but there's, there's more, uh, more uh, influence of the uh, economic environment than in the, in the current situation. However, in the current situation, we had indeed stable pensions, but when you don't have an increase of pension more than 15 years, uh, yeah, it can be stable, but uh, in, in real uh, uh, terms, uh, you have a decrease of pensions more than 20% in the, in, in the last, uh, last 10 years. So that's, uh, you, can, you can have a stable pension, but a stable pension is for a lot of pensioners is, uh, is also a decrease in pension in real, in real terms. But that's very uh, difficult to explain. And then we are in the, in the topic of, and it was mentioned earlier today, is it a guaranteed pension? Is it a conditional guaranteed pension? Is it a promise? Is it an ambition? Or is it the result of, uh, of, of uh, individual investment uh, uh, results? So I think we came from a situation that was a conditional guarantee. It was not a guarantee anymore. And the conditional was the amount of money the pension fund ha had. And also the whole risk was uh, already transferred to the, uh, to the participants and the beneficiaries. And in the last years, some of the big funds in the Netherlands already had a decrease of, uh, of their pension and not an uh, increase at all. So we had already uh, uh, a system of a kind of a collected DC. In the new situation, we have a, uh, a promise and, and maybe it's better to talk about an ambition. Uh, of course, it, is a, it, it has characteristics of DC, uh, but calculating the premium and calculating the ambition is a part of the social, it's the social partners, they agree on it. And it's better to talk about the pension triangle. There's the, the, the level of the premium, the level of the ambition, and also the level of risk you want to, uh, you want to, to take. Um, and the social partners, they negotiate about the level of the premium and the ambition, and in our uh, pension fund, our social partners uh, talk about an ambition still of 80% of the average salary. So that's, they are, we are still thinking in times of uh, average salary. And then they ne negotiate a premium uh, and for, for your information, we are thinking about a premium rate for instance 27%. 27% uh, uh, an ambition of 80% uh, of the average salary and then we as a pension fund uh, we have to, uh, to ask our participants what kind of risk they want to take, what is their risk appetite, and then based on that risk appetite, we can, uh, we can calculate our uh, investment policy. It's interesting for why we have to change this system. I already told about the debate and all the people who are against it. And um, earlier this morning, uh, Andreas Jobst talked about the Allianz Pension Index, uh, it came out uh, yesterday, so as a real actuary, I read it last night in my hotel uh, room, and I, I thought that, saw that the Netherlands was on the second place on the, uh, the Allianz Pension Index. So why 
do we have to change uh, a, a system, a good system that is on the, on the on number two on the list of 50, uh, 50 countries? We are uh, after Denmark. But I take a look into the, the, the calculation, how they came to this, uh, this place, and there were three different uh, characteristics in that index, as also Andreas told this morning. Uh, and we, are, uh, we have a lack of sustainability, financial sustainability. Is the, is the system sustainable for the finance? Is it, uh, can we finance it in, in the future? And that's part of the, uh, the DB in the, in the old system we have. So we have to change to a new system that has DC characteristics and still we, we keep uh, the strong elements of uh, collective uh, pensions, solidarity and uh, the compulsory part. There are four different uh, characteristics that I will uh, tell something more about. It's personal. Uh, it's trans transparent, it's financial sustainable, so that was the, the reason I told about Al the Allianz Pension Index, it's more financial sustainable and it's more related to the labor market. And uh, the pensions will move with the economy, as I said, uh, it's more transparent, every uh, participant can see what is contributed for me, for my premium, what was the part of the employer, what is my part, and I can see on my, my yearly uh, statement uh, what was the premium, what was the, the amount of, uh, of return, and uh, what is the amount of the capital at the, at the end of the year. And in the system now, uh, there's no relation to the premium and the accrued pensions in a, in a special year, because it's a collective premium and also a flat premium for everyone. So the, the younger generations are paying the same uh, uh, level of premium as the older generations, and that is typical for, uh, for a sector when all the employers are, uh, employees are working there the whole life in the same sector. But now it's, uh, it's not uh, yeah, related to the, the modern uh, labor market anymore. So it's more personal, uh, you, have more personal in, uh, 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 you have a more personal insight in it. So that are the, the main new characteristics of the, of the system. And uh, yeah, what I, this is what I said earlier, uh, it's, it was not a strict DB system and it is not a strict DC system uh, uh, anymore. But the main thing I want to say is this figure, and here the actuary in me will, uh, will pop up a little bit. Uh, you see here at the, at the left side of the figure the premiums that uh, are paid every year based on the negotiations of the social partners. They, uh, uh, they negotiate the premium and the premiums will, uh, uh, will be added to the personal pensions uh, capital of the participants. That is the DC part of it. So everyone can see my premium is added to my capital every, every year. But then also at the same time uh, there is a kind of a buffer, a solidarity reserve with a maximum of uh, 15%. There are so, uh, some similarities with the, the, Dutch, uh, of the, the Dutch German system also. Uh, there is a solidarity reserve. It can be, uh, 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 it can be uh, come from the premium or from the returns. And the solidarity reserve is a kind of reserve that the board of the pension fund can, uh, can decide to use for, uh, for, for, for future um, negative uh, 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 situations. Uh, for instance, the same as you told, when, uh, when during the G acclimation phase, when, uh, when the pension of a, uh, is because of the economic environment is decreasing, we can uh, use the solidarity reserve to, uh, to keep the pensions on the, on, on the good level, uh, just only for one year or two years. So it's not for the rest of, the, of, of their, uh, so that's the same as the, uh, as the, as the German situation. But also when in, the, in bad years when the capital uh, is, is, is decreasing because of uh, the bad financial markets, we also can, uh, can add some extra money to the, uh, to the personal capitals of the, the, the active members. So the, the solidarity reserve is a, uh, is a very important instrument in the, in, in the new system. Uh, so there we have instruments, we have tools to, uh, to have some solidarity and collective elements in the, in the system. And then the returns. We have two different uh, uh, possibilities in the Netherlands for the, the new pension system. We have a solidarity uh, system. Willem Jan already told it this morning. All the big pension funds are, uh, are choosing for the solidarity uh, uh, part. Uh, and there's also a flexible uh, possibility. 
And in the flexible possibility, there is the, the investment returns are individual going to the, the participants. And in the solidarity uh, uh, situation, there is a still a collective uh, investment policy. And uh, we have to, uh, to recalculate every year uh, which part of the returns is distributed to the different personal capitals. And there we, uh, we make use of, uh, uh, of, 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 of the hedge returns uh, to, uh, to hedge the, 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 the return risk. And uh, afterwards, uh, we, can, we, can, we can give an extra uh, return to the different uh, uh, ages. So that's the more technical part of it. So uh, in the solidarity system, uh, the individual participants will don't have the same uh, amount of return for every one of, of them. There is uh, we, there's a tool for the pension board to, uh, uh, to manage the, the risk and the, the whole uh, yeah, the whole situation of all the, the, the distribution of the, of, of the ages. So that's also a kind of an instrument we have as pension fund board uh, to keep the, the, the good solidarity and the collective parts of the, of the pension system. So this is the, uh, the main part, the, mo the main characteristics of the, of, of the new system. I, I think it's, a, uh, it's the best combination of DB and DC the, there's no liability for the, the, uh, the, uh, the employers. Uh, there is uh, still a lot of uh, policy for the pension board uh, to protect the pensions also for the vulnerable, vulnerable uh, uh, participants. Uh, and I hope that, uh, that after uh, 15 years of negotiation in the Netherlands, uh, at the end of May, at the end, uh, we, can, uh, we can introduce this, uh, uh, this new legislation. Uh, and still we are busy for more than three years with uh, the implementation and to, uh, to change all the administration uh, systems uh, and also to, uh, yeah, to learn how to use the, the, the toolbox we have as a pension fund. Uh, and I think with this new system, uh, we have a very good uh, tools uh, to protect pensions also for the next 100 years of, uh, uh, of, of pension in the Netherlands, which uh, times of turmoil will come. Uh, we, I think we have a good system. Thank you.